Hey guys, it's Leanna. I'm here today to talk about some plans and goals of mine for 2021. So, uh, this is just, I guess, me being like a way to keep myself accountable, I guess. So this isn't, apart from like one thing on here, none of this is like an official announcement or anything. It's more just kind of like keeping you in the loop on kind of like where my head's at and like what I kind of want to be doing with this <laughs> and also outside of this and where this falls into that outside of Yep. Cool. So one of my plans for this year is to kind of potentially consider looking into the possibility of maybe having something like a Patreon. I have never considered that before, mainly because I don't think anyone would be interested, but also because I frankly don't know what there would be for me to offer that people would be interested in. That is to say, I mean, like beyond the content that I already post, because like with Patreon or th something like Patreon, I would need to come up with something additional or extra or different from what I already do to be like, here, patrons, you get to have this <laughs> if you join my Patreon. And I like, to be quite honest, like what I do on my channel already is kind of like, that's all I've thought of. So I don't, I don't have any ideas really for what I might offer uh, patrons as a, as a benefit, as an exclusive, as a thing. So I guess I kind of want to like sit, figure out if I feel like people would at all be interested because in, there's no point in, in thinking about it at all if no one would be interested, which is fine. <laughs> but like if, if there is interest, then like, I mean, what the fuck are you interested in? Like, what is it that you envisioned you'd be getting from me? <laughs> There was an idea thrown around um, with some of my fellow world hoppers, which like, I kind of thought that might be a good idea because I, I don't really like talking about Sanderson on my channel because of the hatred, the vitriolic, violent hatred that I got for expressing a dissenting opinion about Way of Kings. Because uh, I, was, I was basically saying like, I this is basically the reason that like, I can't read, I can't give Stormlight Archive a second chance because... If I, I talk about everything I read and if I read it, I would have to talk about it. And if I talked about it, if I ended up liking it, then people would like attack me for having been stupid and wrong about not liking Wave Kings. And if I don't like it, then people will pile on me and say, oh, you're just a, a, an attention whore and you're just seeking another excuse to dump on Sanderson. And I don't really want to have either conversation. <laughs> but like, I also don't like that that these cruel people have had such power over my reading choices and that that they are dictating what I can and cannot read by virtue of being awful and me not wanting to deal with it. Because originally, before I got dumped on like that, I had not like absolutely 100% planned on, but I had, it had been in the back of my mind that I would probably still give Words of Radiance a chance because, you know, may as well. People seem to love it. People tend to agree that Words of Radiance is better than Way of Kings. Maybe give it another go. I don't know. But again, like because of the reaction I got, I was like, well, that's off the table. But so anyway, all that to say, how this relates to a Patreon is that some of my world hopper suggested that it'd be a Patreon exclusive, that that would be where I talk about my Sanderson opinions. And like the videos that currently get, get so much hatred get moved to my Patreon and that future videos about Sanderson would be patrons only. And I quite like that idea because I mean, I feel like if you want to shit on me, you have to pay for the privilege. <laughs> So like that was a thought for like what I could offer that would be outside of my normal content. But beyond that, I don't really, I don't know that I have any other ideas for what I could offer, which is another, I was like, thinking, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I could start a Patreon, I could offer that. But then I got thinking and I was like, but what else could I offer? I can't, it can't just be a Patreon for dumping on Sanderson because I also don't want that. I don't want my Patreon to be just a, a place to be mean and ranty. Despite popular belief, I actually like to enjoy what I'm reading. I prefer it, <laughs> which is why I get so angry when I don't like what I'm reading, because I, I like to like what I'm reading and I get mad when I don't like it. <laughs> Anywho, uh, yeah, so this is, I guess, just me saying I'm thinking about it. So do let me know in the comments down below your thoughts about that, I guess. Like if you think a Patreon is a terrible idea and I shouldn't start one, it'd be a waste of my time because no one's interested. Let me know, because then I could just like take it off my mind. Don't have to think about it because nobody, nobody want, no one wants this, so <laughs> don't bother. <laughs> or if there, that is something you'd be interested in, what would you want out of me <laughs> as a patron? <laughs> what is it you'd be expecting from me? Because I don't fucking know. Anyway, yeah, so that's one thing that I'm thinking about. Next up is um, rereading the first law. So 
uh, the last book in the Age of Madness and also the last book that is currently like slated to be published at all in the world of the First Law. It's coming out this year in September. So I want to reread all of the First Law before that happens. So uh, more or less, if I read a book a month, I can be right on target to read the new one when it comes out. I'll be slightly off because I would be needing to read The Trouble with Peace in September as well as the new book when it comes out. But because it comes out at the end of September, I might possibly squeeze that in and or just read it at the beginning of October. It's it's pretty, I mean, it's pretty close to being on target. So um, yeah, that's a goal of mine. I don't think it needs too much explanation. I love the first law. So I just want to reread it. Do I need a reason? <laughs> but it does kind of tie into my next goal, which is I want to do standalone reviews for a lot of favorite books of mine that I've never done standalone reviews for because either I read them before I started my booktube channel um, or I just for whatever reason just didn't do a review at the time when I read it because I feel I felt at the time that like well I, I talked about it in my wrap up and that's sufficient but I've come to appreciate kind of the value of a standalone book review like, as a consumer myself wrap ups are fine and, and good but they're more for just like if you're interested in what this person has been reading as opposed to interested in this book and you've happened to found this person who read it too. Also, I also want to like balance. I have, I feel like I haven't actually checked the numbers on this, but I think I have more rant reviews than positive reviews on my channel or it's like 50, 50. And I just kind of like want to tip the scale more in favor of positive reviews. Cause I'm kind of low key sick of people thinking that all I do is rant. It's not true. I just often have a lot more to say about something if I hate it. And I think a lot of people are that way when you're frustrated by something you have a lot more pent up <laughs> energy and, and a lot more to bitch about. When you're happy with something and, and you're positive about it, you're just like, well, it was great. <laughs> I would change nothing. It's excellent. <laughs> so for that reason, I've ended up with a lot more negative minutes of view time. But yeah, I want to equally represent things that I love because I'm tired of people being like, she hates everything she reads. That is not true. There are so many books that I love the shit out of, but I don't have standalone reviews for those things. So like, it's, uh, I very often am not able to point to like, well, look at all these reviews I have of books that I love. Um, so I, I want to fix that. <laughs> Plus it gives me an excuse to reread those books because that's another thing. That's part of this and that's part of rereading the first law. I never did standalone reviews for any of the first law books. I started doing standalone reviews with A Little Hatred and I did one for A Little Hatred and for uh, The Trouble with Peace. But I never did standalone reviews for The Blade itself, before they were hanged. I mean, I don't have to list them all, but I didn't do any for any of the others. And my kind of first Abercrombie video was kind of my instead of, because I kind of regretted not doing any standalone reviews. And by then it seemed too late. So I just kind of did an overall, like, this is why I love the series video. And like, it's one of my most watched videos. So like, I'm, I'm fine with that. But I would really like to have standalone reviews for all of those books, even if very few people watch them. I just feel like that's missing from my channel for such an Abercrombie fan. Like, where be their reviews, bro? So yeah, so I'm in addition to just generally wanting to reread all the first law books, as I reread them, I intend to do a standalone review for each one as I go. Do it right this time. <laughs> but there are, and I, not every book that I would like to reread and have a standalone review for, it's not realistic that I can get through them all this year. But there are many that I would like to do that for. So obviously, again, first law is tops on my list. And since I'm planning to reread the series anyway, now's a good time as any to like handle that part of the project. <laughs> But there's other books too. A lot of Neil Gaiman books. I always say Neil Gaiman is my favorite author, but there's very little evidence of that on my channel because a lot of Neil Gaiman I read before I started my channel and or like just happened to not do standalone reviews. And he hasn't really had like a bunch of new releases <laughs> for me to review since I started my channel. So like I would love to actually do a standalone review for American Gods for uh, Ocean at the End of the Lane. Once again, I did a Neil Gaiman video akin to my Abercrombie video that's kind of like an instead of, where it's an overview of like kind of why I like the author and why I like his books and some of my favorites, but I would still like to have standalone reviews. So again, American Gods, Ocean at the End of the Lane. I'd like to review some of his children's books. I'd like to review, I'd, I'd also had a video on Sandman because that was that was a recent read of mine. So I did do that, but yeah, basically review. Uh, I'd like to review Lies of Locke Lamora which I've read twice already and I would like to read a third time because I, I love that book so I have no problem rereading that as well as the other Gentleman Bastards books, Red Season of Red Skies and Republic of Thieves. I, I don't think I ever did a standalone review for any of the Blackwing books, the Raven's Mark trilogy that is, the first book is Blackwing. Read that trilogy, love that trilogy, have mentioned that trilogy many times but never did stand, standalone reviews. That's what comes to mind right now, uh, Red Rising. I've talked about Red Rising a lot but I've, I never did standalone reviews for Red Rising. <laughs> so... 
yeah, there's quite a few that I would like to actually do standalone reviews for, which I've said like a bajillion times now. I think you get it. I would like to do more vlogs. I mean, I have been doing more vlogs already, but like that's one of my goals is kind of keep up with that. And I don't know if any of the videos that I've posted before this one has said this yet. So this might be your first time hearing it that I'm moving. I've said that before <laughs> in things I've filmed, but I don't know if you've seen it yet. <laughs> so I am moving quite soon. And so I'll have new digs and everything. So, and I'm quite excited about being able to vlog there because I'm really excited about my new apartment as it will be and is not yet. <laughs> so I'm excited to have the opportunity to do a more a bigger variety of vlogs. And hopefully if the world <laughs> allows for this, COVID will go away and because like all my vlogs by necessity have been just like me on my couch, <laughs> me in the kitchen. So I'll have a slightly bigger apartment. So you might, the, the setting will be slightly less monotonous. It'll still be just an apartment, but like my apartment complex will have a lot of cool little areas. So like once COVID is less COVID-y, <laughs> hopefully I'll be able to film in other parts of my apartment complex, which are really nice. It's a really historic building. So there's like nice areas to film and also just like out and about. Because like before I ever started vlogging and before COVID, I was going to tons of author events. And then vlogging and COVID happened around the same time. So like the history of me vlogging has been pandemic vlogging. But I now that I have, a, when I was going to those author events, I didn't have a vlogging camera and I was going to haul around my like heavy DSLR because, and my phone was shitty. So now I have an iPhone with a great camera, which I didn't have before. And I have a vlogging camera. All I need is for the pandemic to go away <laughs> to be able to actually have events to go to again. Because again, I was I went to like a lot of author events. So it'd be fun to be able to vlog stuff like that once it happens again. <laughs> so that's kind of a goal of mine, just generally like world situation allowing to vlog more and more diversely, not just me on my couch drinking coffee and reading books. Because like as, as much as I'm sure you love seeing that... <laughs> I'm sure it gets old. I would also like to prioritize writing. Like I I totally dropped the ball on writing in 2020 for many reasons. I mean, many, many reasons that don't need explaining. 2020 was crazy, but I'm really, really excited about my new apartment for one of the reasons being that like, not everyone is this way, but I personally, I need the space I'm in to be conducive to reading and writing. It's one of the reasons that I'm constantly like so focused on kind of creating an ambiance and an environment that is similar to and puts me in mind of what I'm reading. Like having a candle scented like the world that I'm immersing myself in. Having music that sounds like the world that I'm immersing myself in. Eating foods that are similar to the kind of foods that the people in this world that I'm immersing myself in would eat. Like I need that. And my apartment has not been the best place for me to be writing. <laughs> Uh, for many reasons, many, many, many reasons. Um, and also the fact that I felt quite stuck and I don't do well feeling stuck. I don't even necessarily need to leave. <laughs> it's just knowing that I can. And that just like, it has been eating away at me, this feeling that I cannot leave. <laughs> and it's not just the pandemic. The pandemic is a big reason, but it's also that my neighborhood is really not the best neighborhood and that like the parking situation is insane. So like, it's one of those, like, it's like a battle royale to get your parking space. And once you've got it, you better not fucking move. So, like, I never feel like I can leave to go for a hike. I also hurt my ankle in 2020. So I really couldn't go hiking, couldn't leave my parking space, couldn't go walk around my neighborhood because my neighborhood is scary. So, like, I just felt so trapped. And that trapped feeling made a lot of things just, like, I, I it was harder for me to read. It was harder for me to write. It was harder for me to do everything. And my new apartment is in a better neighborhood, the parking situation's not so crazy, my ankle's feeling better, and hopefully the pandemic will be ending. So, and there's a, there's gym facilities in my new apartment. So I am hoping that mentally I will be in a space where I can write again. And I want to, because I, I didn't even bother prioritizing it in 2020 because I knew I was in a headspace to do it. I knew that if, even though I set aside time for it, I just wasn't I wasn't in a headspace where I could do it, which I already said, but it's just the, the only way I can explain it. So I am very hopeful that in 2021, I will once again be in a headspace where I can. Another goal of mine is to actually read my book of the month club books as they come. So ideally, because each book or each month, there is a book of the month. And then you can also choose two add-ons if you would like. I would like to keep up with reading my, uh, my book that is of the month as it comes. So they usually like, it's like your your January book will kind of come mid-January. 
even though you order it at the beginning of January. So like not in the month that it comes because like I will have already set my TBR before then, but kind of in the following month. So like read my January book in February, read my February book in March, etc. And then hopefully also get through a lot of the add-ons that I have because I need, I mean, I keep my pile of book of the month club books is piling up and Loki's stressing me out when I'm just like, I haven't read any of these, but I keep getting a new one every month because <laughs> I can't resist. So I would like, I would, it would help me feel not that it really matters because I constantly buy books that I don't read. It's just something about them being of the month that makes me feel like, well, I should then read them of the month <laughs> as they come. It would just make me feel better and more accomplished and less like, it, it feels kind of like an inbox with unread emails. <laughs> I don't know how else, that's kind of the same feeling I have about all my book of the month quote books. I want to read, have read them. It's also because the book of the month site kind of tracks it, which like once I realized that added to my stress when it's, when they keep wanting you to rate the books that you got of the month and they have their own reading challenge where like the challenge you win you win or you you don't lose the challenge if you read 12 books because in theory even if some of them were add-ons and not of the month in theory you read a book a month for the year <laughs> so i i just <laughs> I've, i'm not a competitive person with other people but i'm competitive with myself so i'm like yeah i want to beat that challenge and i can i just gotta do it <laughs> i realized way too late in the year in 2020 uh that that was a thing and i was like well it's too late now <laughs> i can't beat that challenge <laughs> but no, I, I want to challenge accepted uh, i also want to prioritize series um i frequently put off continuing series because the start of a new series that's super hyped is like on my tbr and i will frequently prioritize the start of a newly hyped newly released series over continuing an existing series partly because like i'm a whore for clicks and i'm like well people will care more about this than about me just plugging along in a series that I'm already reading that everyone else has already read. And partly because I uh, get sucked into the hype. And I'm like, well, I want to know what everybody's reading, what everybody, this book that everybody talks about, like how I want to know what it's about and how I feel about it. So I'm trying to prioritize just reading series that I'm already in the middle of that I am enjoying and not get sucked into the whirlwind of hype. Like that doesn't mean I won't start any new series. <laughs> I will. But yeah, to, to ignore some of the hype and just read what I am reading. Finish what's on my plate before I go back to the buffet, basically. I would also like to prioritize reading more nonfiction. There was a chunk of the year where I was kind of reading a little more nonfiction, and then I kind of went back to the dessert bar, which is grimdark fantasy for me. <laughs> need to get back to my greens and read some more nonfiction. I will feel better. I will be better. This will be better. <laughs> I, and I have a lot of nonfiction books that I've acquired that I would like to read. It's just that like, you know, especially in 2020, feeling trapped as I did, I wanted to go on mental adventures and reading a nonfiction book is not a mental adventure. I mean, it can be depending on what it is, depending on what kind of nonfiction it is, but I think you know what I mean. So 2021, hopefully being less shit and feeling less trapped and being just more able to do things that are good for me and that feel good and have the capacity mentally to do more I would like to incorporate more greens in my reading diet. And kind of going along with that, I'd like to watch less TV. Again, part of the TV watching was 2020 being horrible. And like, where even reading fantasy books is not enough of an escape. Like mentally, I was too exhausted to do anything but like watch random YouTube videos for like 10 hours. <laughs> not great. So I'm hoping a lot of habits are formed, uh, based on kind of the space you're in. And so I moved into this apartment where I am currently right at the start of the pandemic. So like all of the habits that I formed in this apartment were like early pandemic habits. And that was just terrible. So like this place has always been a place that has felt like a holding pattern, a wait and see, uh, like this is just for now feeling. Cause it's all just been kind of like, like I never ever ever got to establish a routine here in this space where I would wake up early, fix some coffee and go to work and then come home and then read and whatever. Like this has always been a space I was moving in, in during the pandemic. So it was always like, I guess we're working from home. Don't know for how long, maybe we'll go back. Looks like we're not again. Maybe we'll go back. No, we're not. So it's always just kind of been this like weird limbo. And it's always been like, we're like, I, I, do I make plans? Do I not? Like, I don't know if we, we are still doing this for a while or not. Like I felt like, this inability to create routines and establish patterns here because it's all just been kind of like, don't know what we're doing here yet. So now that like things are settled, I know what my routines will be 
I know what my responsibilities and obligations will be in 2021 a lot better than I did in 2020, I can establish better routines and better patterns in my new digs because like I have the opportunity to create new associations with this new physical space. And I really want to seize on that. So like the way that I arrange my furniture and everything, I want it to be more conducive to more reading, more writing, better like open mental health feelings. Like I I'm like looking at this as like, I'm not pinning all my, like, I don't expect a new apartment to just like fix everything, but it is an excellent opportunity. Just like how like New Year's is a good like mental breaking point to be like, well, this is a new year, a new start, like a fresh year, fresh chance to do things differently. A new apartment even more so is that way, a chance to form new patterns and behaviors and habits. So I'm really hoping to yeah form newer better habits in my new space and you'll see if I succeed or not because I'll be vlogging because that's one of my goals <laughs> so yeah I think that does it those are my goals for the year more or less let me know in the comments down below if you have similar goals if you think goals are stupid <laughs> uh if uh you know whatever you want to let me know <laughs> I post videos on Saturdays at the random times as well but definitely Saturdays so like and subscribe and I will see you when I see you. Bye.